Welcome to the Notorious Scoundrels, a Star Wars Legion podcast bringing you the latest news, general perspective, and competitive discussion. Hello and welcome back to the Notorious Scoundrels podcast. I'm Kyle. I'm here with Mike and Zach. Zach, what, are you massaging yourself? What's going on there? Yeah, you know, just uh, got this massage ball, got like a stretching kit and, you know, mm-hmm. just give it a, you know, quick little quick little muscle hit you know he's 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 into the self-care what can we say <laughs> you use like lotion and stuff too for your no i put the lotion in the basket man okay <laughs> nice uh <laughs> anyway um we are going to talk today about primarily about uh we're going to do our next slot which will be imperial special forces so we'll hit that in just a minute do we have any housekeeping mike before we get into our topics here um sidebars sidebars if they're not sold out they're still on i mean uh, i'm gonna be honest we've been working on so many other things right now <laughs> sidebars feel like they're like three months ago i know that they're still up on the store and i know that you can purchase them um i'm not entirely sure where they're at uh there <laughs> okay. will be a lot of housekeeping here at some point in the future yeah, but, yeah. um right now we're not ready to talk about it so um yeah awesome all right sorry i kind of blindsided you with that no you're totally cool it's not really a blindside when we start every episode with that i really should be more prepared <laughs> um i just yeah um been a busy couple of days for you know it's been a busy couple of months um so yeah yep all right we also had the invader league top four games played so in osatum Please, Inosatum, tell me if I'm mispronouncing your name, because if I am, I've done it like four times now. <laughs> um, advanced past Timbo, R2 scored a touchdown, if I'm not mistaken, on the, the back of a ridiculous seven of nine saving throw. So um, congrats to Inosatum, who will be playing in the final against Snyder, who uh, advanced past Mike via bombing run. And of course, 13 activation stats are good at that. So, indeed. indeed. um, Now you got me thinking that, like, that R2 is like Marshawn Lynch in that, like, infamous run now, because that, you know what? That's essentially what happened. Like, get off me, get off me, get off me, roll seven out of nine. Like, get out of here, R2, you trash can. Yeah. uh, Table flip. Holy hell. Um, Yeah. So, congrats to Snyder and Enosatum. That is the Invader League final. And uh, we will also that will be on May second. I think I just saw. Yeah, I think, I think. at two thirty Eastern. Yeah, yeah. I think the place has yet to be determined. Yeah. Um, <laughs> actually, is that even public info? That actually might only be in streamer chat. Now that I'm thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can cut that if it if it is. Uh, I'm sure um, that by the time, you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we should be pumping in anyways, regardless. Yeah, of that. totally. And then you and Timbo are playing the bronze match on next Saturday? weekend sometime. Yeah. Uh, I think it was seven o'clock Eastern on Saturday, the April twenty fifth. That sounds right. Yeah, sounds April twenty right. fifth. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting. You know, I um, would like to see what sort of metal this uh, the saber list has it as. You know. Um, He's clearly piloted it very well on paper. Yeah, I look at it and it feels uninspiring, but I don't know. It yeah. he seems to be doing well with it. So yeah, saber sometimes go, saber go Burt. Saber go yeah. Burt. So sometimes knowing a list, you know, is, is helpful, even if the you know to the totally. make, you know the outside eye, you know. Well, I think I think you know that's a that's a big part of Legion, right? Um, yeah, is, totally. Yeah, you know, uh, and. Um, clearly he knows how to play a saber tank which is which is cool it's unique and um it's good on him for being able to do that uh we'll see if it stands up to the might of the shared aim token um this is the first time in i think since season four that we've had a heavy in the top four um and i think that might have been the only other time that was uh luke uh brought an atst mm-hmm. that was the tauntaun season oh my uh, god that was also the sure comms really it was yeah yeah, yeah i yeah. Oh, i played him in the bronze match i'm very aware <laughs> no. yeah where he did like a 45 degree slant thing with his atst on yeah, the yeah. crate but luke survived that shot because he's a boss 
Luke, <laughs> Luke Skywalker, not Luke Cook. Um, that ATST did die. <laughs> that you're, <came. laughs> you're not a boss, Luke Cook. You hear me? Luke Skywalker uh, is. <laughs> Luke Skywalker's a boss. Yeah. Um, no. So this is, I think, only one of two times in Invader history that we've had a heavy in the final four. So. Yeah. I mean, uh, traditionally, they're not super creative. Yeah. So congrats <laughs> to Timbo for making it this far with one. I'm excited to see that match. Um, yeah, and I mean, this- overall, I mean, the most notable thing to me was that Mike was the two seed and everyone else was like a 40 or below seed. Yeah. Like, I don't know how re- like relevant the seeds are. I don't either, have. right? Because like round robin like creates like a thing, but it's, it's still a, yeah cool to see. I think you know, uh, like, and it's all different names too, right? Other it than is. Mike, really, you know. Um, I, I invaders, I I don't I'm not sure there's anything you can change about it to make it better, but I don't think seeding by victory points doesn't actually tell you that much. Um, yeah, that's fair. You know which is basically what happens. Um, yeah. And even if you do like um, head to head seating, you know, you're still talking about a pool of just five players that plays each other. So, you know, anything weird things can happen when you, when you only have five players. In- right. I mean, chances are, I mean, I mean, if, if, if you have a t- end up with a really good seed to, it is more likely that you had a not so great round Robin group than it was competitive and hard to get out of. Yeah, possibly. Right. You know, there's you certainly there's you know, what like forty groups or something silly like that. So you clearly you have all kinds. But I mean, I was um, a two seed and our group was pretty hard. So I you know. yeah, <laughs> but um, you know, yeah, and um, I mean, clearly you have to do it somehow, right? You got two hundred and forty players in a tournament, like yeah. You, I you know. I just I'm not sure that there's a there's a better way. But yeah, it, it is know, what it is. It is what it is. That's a long way of saying like the seeds are. You know, it's great that we're seeing like low seeds have success. I'm not surprised one way or another. Um, yeah. I, this this tournament had a lot of good players in it. I think the competitive level of the community at large, at least those participating in Invader, has increased significantly uh, since the game started. So, um, yeah, I'm not remotely surprised. I think it's great. Um, all right. Zach, I understand you played some actual games with real dice and tools. Yeah, I had feet for hands for like the first like hour. Um, it was it was actually kind of hectic. I uh, I planned it so like it was like a like a six to seven hour thing at my place of work actually because I have like a big garage warehouse and everyone there was vaccinated. So we set up two tables, but like I ran a little late because I was dropping off the kids and you know how that could be leaving the house with the kids. So now I feel like I'm, you know, imposing on my friends. I mean, they're my friends; they get it. But like it's but still right. I feel like I'm running, you know, I'm 20 minutes late, 30 minutes late, get there, start setting up the tables. You know, you start, you haven't seen anybody. So you, sh- you know, shooting the shit. And uh, so I'm a little bit harried, like, cause I'm like setting up both tables cause it's all my terrain. So like I'm setting up the tables and doing all this stuff. I finally sat down on my table and like, I'm bringing on my models and get cards and stuff, but I feel like I'm taking forever because I'm already just way behind the eight ball. Um, first, like couple rounds, my token, like control of like aims and, surges i felt like i was like tossing them and like they were slipping out of my hands and the first couple dice rolls were like hitting the dice tray and popping out because it's been forever and i don't know how they hit in the dice tray anymore and uh because typically when you have like a dice tray you know how they bounce so you kind of control how they bounce out or it's still going to happen but you can at least have an idea it's been a while um it's all in the wrist zach you got to practice if you want to roll those crits you got to practice yeah uh or or roll surges with obi-wan when he has dodges which is what i was kind of doing there you go um so yeah i just played a whatever the most degenerate obi-wan build would be which is just obi-wan the generic fives in a phase one three phase twos three arcs brought barrier aggressive tactics and uh push on uh obi-wan vigilance on the generic commander and uh yeah, just played two fun games of Legion. I played a played Rebels both games, both with uh, peer stacking Rebels actually. Um, so first game was uh, recover the supplies against two Wookies, Sabine Clan Ren uh, list. Um, it was hemmed in, and I was blue, which is kind of good for boxes. But at the same time, Wookies kind of had it. Well, the way the board was set up, I kind of I kind of messed myself up a little bit because I we we weren't like picking sides to like be like uber competitive. We're kind of playing a little loose and, you know, not trading sides and moving models. The side I was on is a little open 
and where my boxes were could have been hit by Wookiees and the uh, clan ran at various points. And I had to go into the open many times against these heavy throwing Wookiees. So I had to like time it all right. Honestly, Obi-Wan put the game on his back um, because the Wookiees had a really good flank from one of the sides because hemmed in, they can get in quickly because because of scale. So there was two buildings that he could have, he scaled across and got to me by like round two. So my Wookiees, the Wookiees were in my face quick. Um, it was so as good as it looked on paper, it was a little bit more difficult than it sounded just because of the board layout, which is, I guess, my own fault. Um, but like, you know, it's been a while and I, I wasn't really concerned about board. I wasn't going to let the board dictate it. And um, yeah, Obi-Wan did some Obi-Wan things and uh, I pulled it out there. And second game, uh, I played against um, local me Kodak on the Discord and uh, he brought a Rebel Lando op loop list which I was a little afraid of, not going to lie, because um, it had, you know, multiple snipers. It had Wookiees, it had Luke, it had Lando, a couple DLT 20s. It's a good list. Um, he was blue that game. I think it was Disarray, KP, clear conditions in that one. And, uh, yeah, he played uh, his first game against an A18. He kind of hunkered down. So I'd, I'd, he got a little bloodlusty in the second game, I think, just because he wanted to throw some dice. And, uh yeah, I put I put Luke in a casket like round two, uh, and so the game just kind of tilted sideways there. But you know what? We had fun. We were rolling dice. We were having laughs, and uh, you know it was good to get back on the table for the first time in like what feels like forever. Yeah, that's awesome. I am um, currently planning on going to Atlantic City, and uh, yeah, I am. <laughs> there's going to be tokens flying everywhere. The first time I pull out that range ruler, I'm going to like knock everything over with it. It's going to be brutal. Um, I, I have to admit my ability to, to figure out ranges and moves was a lot better than I was expecting. Like I used to be able to just kind of look at the board and know, and not really measure. I was a little concerned. I was going to look at the board and be like, I don't know if that's going to be right or not. Um, so it, it's, I think that it's more about, right. I think it's more riding a bicycle than we think it's, but the physical, hope so. the physical part of the tokens though, for sure. Like, my hands were not hands for like a good two hours, seriously. And I, there was nothing I could do, but I just accepted it at one point. I was like, this is just happening. Especially when it's been a long time you play and you're playing on disarray. Disarray is like the worst thing you could possibly play. Uh, it's, yeah, brutal. <laughs> like, and I actually like playing it mid game, like, but like it's the tokens and knowing where all your stuff is and you're borrowing your stuff from your opponent half the time. And uh, you know, but, you know, luckily I, you know, trust everybody was playing with, you know, to do all that. And there was that. So it was a fun day. Um, we're going to hopefully make it like a probably easier for me to kind of cram in two games on like a weekend like that and try and make it like a monthly thing. And, uh, you know, maybe I'll go. It's at my place of work. So maybe like on Friday before I leave, I like set up the table so I don't actually have to do that on, on Sunday. <laughs> you know, yeah, honey, I'm going to be like 30 minutes late tonight. So I can set up the tables for Sunday. <laughs> but yeah, fun day. Awesome. I'm jealous. Soon enough, friend. Soon enough. Yep. I got to get to painting. I have a bunch of B2s to paint. <laughs> so. Yeah, I proxied some I stuff so that. my armor was fully painted so it didn't look bad. I there might I might just go back to playing Empire because <clears throat> my clones are not uh, not ready to go yet. What uh, special forces are you going to take? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny you should mention that um yeah there, let's, uh, let's go into it yeah there is there's a ton of ton of options when it comes to empire for special forces you're right there's a quantity <laughs> <laughs> there is a long list of things that you have to choose from uh and a very short list of things that you should choose from so <laughs> um zach you had a good summary i think in our pre-show so why don't you want to like Let's just yeah. wrap this topic up in like 30 seconds. Yep. And here's, go. here's our hard hitting analysis on uh, Imperial special forces as a whole, not the unit um, scout troopers, full scout troopers, not good. Uh, strike teams probably got to take them because they're necessary. Uh, Imperial special forces really good with Iden. I don't know how else without Iden Inferno squad is bad. Uh, IRG. You probably have to take with like a force user. So you now have spent 375 points. How do you feel? Um, death troopers do not put them on the table. 
I would just like to caveat it's more like 275 points, but sure. Well, yeah, it's yeah, 275. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was it, was it, was it, minor, it was like 300, 300, 300 with the uh, staff. it's like a rounding error. It's listen, points. I, yeah. listen, I'm just the facetiousness of it is is what's is what sells it, Mike. It's right. got to sell it. Um, but yeah, that, that is my summary of Imperial Special Forces, sadly. And I'm not necessarily going to take any of that back because it's kind of how I feel. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. I don't disagree, but we should probably still hit this unit by unit. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah, for sure. Because um, I do think, so you mentioned full scouts first. Um, I actually think there are some contexts in which you could potentially take full scouts. Yes. Sure. I, I've definitely done it. Because um, they are only 48 points. Sure. Um, which is the same as a strike team with the sniper rifle. It's, it's also can... like the same as like a core unit. <laughs> Okay, clearly, yes. But, you know, um, it's but they're much more effective was my point. Yeah. Right. You know, it's it's only four it's four models and they throw eight black dice with sharpshooter 2 at range uh, sorry, sharpshooter 1 at range 2. Yeah. Hey, sharpshooter 2 is a whole different story. Uh, yeah, 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 I don't yeah, think no. that's true, but sure. <laughs> I mean, it's it's eight dice, Zach. That's, you know, yeah. it's a lot of dice with sharpshooter, eight black yeah. dice. They died to a stiff breeze. Clearly, I mean, they do. They're, they're more lethal fleet troopers. Is what yeah. They yes. Right, yes. Right. Um, and fleet troopers don't really get taken. So, I mean, like, this is in a more competitive slot than the Rebel Core unit. Um, I, I actually think if, if somehow this was a core unit, you would take them. Yeah, for sure. I, I absolutely. I don't think they would be 48 points if they were a core unit. For the... Well, even at 48, because it's like, I mean, fleets are the same defensively. You, people take naked fleets. That's like a thing that you do. Yeah. yeah. For, for, yeah. For, yes, I could, I could probably see that. They wouldn't. There's no way they would have sharpshooter on a core unit. Right. Oh, clearly, no. Right. I'm just saying if their stats were the same. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. If they, were, you mean if they were the same as fleets and they were 48 points in Empire, would you take them? Essentially, is what you're saying. Right. Like, and without the point, sharpshooter point. No. Let's assume that their stats are the same. My point is that like, mm. the reason you don't take them is because. They're in a special There's, forces slot. They're in a special forces slot, not because the unit itself is like untakeable. I I also think, and this is gonna be a little bit controversial because you know, Empire is like all bad and stuff. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I actually think there is some merit to taking the full squad just to be able to flex a little bit. Um, like in a lot of scenarios, it is a strike team with more health, which is kind of okay. And in scenarios when you need something close range, um, it's, it's really good. I also would like to point out that there are two scenarios that I actually think full scouts are exceptional. Uh, the first is with Iden. Um, if 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 you're able to get an attack strike. 10 black dice with pierce one sharpshooter one and two aim tokens is stupid good you're talking about if you take them with the sniper plus the naked unit right yes yes yeah i mean even if you're taking the naked unit naked unit you're still talking about two aim tokens with uh -oh. eight black dice for 48 points yeah it's still really good i just like i'm not sure it's like build around like i oh, I, I sort of think yeah. that if you're taking the unit just because of the nature of special forces if you're taking the unit you're probably taking the heavy um definitely whatever you do don't take the sab guy on the full unit yeah don't. <laughs> like there was like a time period where that was interesting we're not in that time period right <laughs> no now. totally like for sure it was um, definitely interesting at one point yeah the the other scenario i think that is somewhat interesting is um they're probably the cheapest good option for the lat yeah. That was the um, only thing I could think of was the lat. You know, like snow troopers are sort of interesting, but they're kind of, um, I don't know. Uh, they lack some oomph against particular targets, I feel like. Mm -hmm. um, and I think full scouts kind of make up that deficit and then some. You know, I, I guess like the one exception being like if you're gonna hit armor you probably want snows with impacts instead but if you're using if you're if you're playing against armor 
the lat is probably not your best bet <laughs> to win the game anyways because it's probably just going to drop out of the sky before it gets there um would be my guess so yeah i mean they're not good but those are the situations that i think if you're gonna play them like those are the situations you're gonna play them in yeah i agree yeah for sure i'm with you all right so while we're on the scout topic let's talk about uh sniper strike teams i'm still heavy in the camp uh and i think i've said this the past like three episodes for all i know at this point there's like this like thought process that you know civil war snipers aren't that good and that's basically living in the shadows of arc troopers which everything lives in the shadow of arc troopers it's like it's like mufasa telling simba that the dark side of you know the uh of the um the desert is where they don't go like that's the shadow that you see on there is like completely tripled in terms of legion because like everyone's shadowed by arc troopers long range pierce is still good it, it, it's they are for sure they're fragile for sure they're going to lose in a gunfight to arc troopers these are all true statements the fact of the matter is you're going to need that long range pierce and when you don't have it it's going to hurt Yep, I think I think the same analysis that we applied to Rebel Sniper Strike teams applies here. Um, you can be sad that they're not arcs. Uh, sorry, uh, <laughs> they're still good. They're still necessary. You should still take them. There's it's still forty eight points for an activation that is useful, uh, especially is, in an army that needs all the points they can get. Yep. Um, it is a useful, reliable, timing neutral, long range activation for 48 points. So, still good. Still take them. They should still be, unless you're building around something specific, they should still be like the default thing that you fill your special forces slot with. So, this is a good segue probably into the next unit, but I actually don't think that's true. All right. I don't think that's completely true, rather. All right, hit me with the uh, hit me with the next unit. So I strongly believe that the default for imperial lists right now should be two strikes and one naked IRG squad. Um, okay, continue. The reason for this is that um, I think really the only way that Empire can survive in any fashion in the current meta is if you you basically just offer that irg squad up to the gods to keep everything else alive just guardian um, the shit out of everything yeah i think i i don't even think you take the heavy frankly I think i'm you with a you naked irg squad and you guardian until you're at like one hit point left and then hide that dude behind a rock you just basically um, make them chewbacca in that in that sense yeah, yeah. and i and i i strongly feel that like that's the only way you're going to build an empire list that can win a gunfight right now. Um, yeah. Um, so it, it might not feel good, but I, 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 tend to I, agree I don't think you. it feels good, but I think, I think the, the third slot being an IRG unit as opposed to a strike team is like a world of difference. It, it, it's not a like feel good difference for sure. Um, that unit is just there to die. <laughs> Um, but it's also uh, worth highlighting that the ability to take a red save unit with guardian that's you know less cost than obi-wan kenobi is unique to empire it it totally is and it's just like basically as long as that irg unit has wounds on it you can kind of do the like heavy cover plus plus thing sort of if you've already written that unit off right like you're like okay i'm in heavy cover plus i've got guardian too so yes you can hit me with your crits but like at least i'm not taking five hits from aimed z6 shots to the face i'm loading two of it here two of it's getting soaked by cover and like maybe one or two are getting through right you know um i really think that's the only way it, it, it it's it's not really reducing the damage you're taking it's just shifting it to a place that it doesn't matter yeah um, you're you're basically siphoning off the wounds to have the other units that can produce the wounds you need to to clap back yeah. essentially um i personally have been in all my games even prepping for worlds last year i have an irg unit on every list 
um, because I, I, I really don't think you can, and, unless you're, you know, we'll talk about special forces later, but unless you're doing something fancy with that slot, I think it's two snipers and an IRG. And clearly, if you're taking Palpatine, like you can still take three snipers or whatever, because uh, he kind of like, gets to have best of both worlds there. Um, but I think an IRG unit is kind of mandatory right now. I don't like IRG because I actually think uh, offensively, um, they they're not very good. Um, particularly when you like contrast them to like the unit they were released next to, which is Wookiees that apparently have duelist and and uh, the <laughs> elite elite shock troopers of the Emperor do not. Uh, but um, I guess that's whatever. <laughs> that's cool. Well, they're still humans, Mike. <laughs> what in the word <laughs> duelist makes you feel like it's got to be exclusive to aliens? I, I know, I know. I don't, I don't, I don't just... know. There's a Mandalorian um, that has duels. I'm aware of this. I'm just saying Wookiees are like big and furry and, you know. Yeah, I just like if we're doing like errata stuff, like I just, I don't understand why the yeah, love yeah, couldn't it, have it, been shared a little bit there. Because um, I mean, like, don't get me wrong, IRG and Wookiees definitely like do different things, um, but they're not that different outside of like the Guardian role. They're kind of they play a lot of the same roles in those two factions, and um, yeah. Uh, anyways, this is not me uh, griping about how Wookies got it because um, Wookies are real good right now. But um, yeah, one IRG every Empire list, unless you're doing something special, is my hot take. I don't necessarily agree with it, but um, I can see where you're coming from. As someone who's gotten a lot of their short troopers shot off the table, yeah, yeah. let me <laughs> let me tell you, it's. Uh... I think if you're looking for that effect, you can sort of duplicate it um, more cost effectively with medics. But I don't know. I mean, it's, I it's I, I, I think you do sponge, both. But yeah, frankly, okay, um, clearly yeah. you can do both, and this <laughs> yeah. is actually why I think Palpatine lists are, have been good for a while, and I think still are good. Yeah. Is because you kind of combine, like you you said, you get the best of both worlds, right? You can take three snipers, you can still take an IRG. Those IRG get a free order every turn for, you know, if you're running with aggressive tactics, it makes their guardian save better. Yeah, and I mean, because I don't get run... everybody complaining about direct. Direct's been in the game for a really long time. It just has been stapled to Palpatine. Okay. <laughs> Staple to a 200 point unit, not a 55 point commander. That's no krennic has got it too. At least the two <laughs> series. Krennic is technically ninety plus DTs. Really. Sorry, I'm just trying to get Gizak to go off here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, at least direct does not give you an extra slot like Entourage does. I mean, if that was the case, you would see me flip this computer right over. But <laughs> anyway, uh, back on topic here. Um, and then Palpatine is also usually taking medics, so usually yeah. not usually always. Uh, if you're running Palpatine list without medics in it, you're crazy. Um, so yeah, I uh, personally I think IRG are Vader slash Palpatine only, um, but I also don't generally play Empire without Palpatine. So um, my view on that is probably a little bit skewed because they're so good with him for a variety of reasons. Um, but uh, yeah, I think that definitely used to be true. Um, Maybe it's not anymore. I I, th I think it used to be too true when you could take like a Veer's gun line and like have like a like they at least know you had a chance at winning the gunfight, um, but I think that that doesn't really exist anymore. Uh, maybe not. A, well, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Yeah. Continue. Um. <laughs> Tim so Hannon wants to know your thoughts. Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> I realized I couldn't disagree with you, so I'm just going to move on. Okay. Um, <laughs> upgrades. Uh, Electro Staff, I think, is great if you're running them with Palp. If you're yeah. running them purely as a Guardian battery, clearly not necessary. Uh, if you're running the linebacker version, the one with the Electro Staff, I also think you definitely need Tenacity. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, and you could also consider Ascension Cables or Environmental Gear. Yeah, I think E-Gear is what I would consider for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mainly because 
cables are clearly better, right? Like in terms of like giving but you can only you, use them once, but you can only use them once, and you're never recovering with IRG. No, or I mean, you're if, very rarely recovering with IRG. How's that? If you're running them in a Veers list, you probably well in the Veers list for yeah, sure. But you're yeah. not bringing the electro staff and in, in cables. I no, don't think. no, probably not. Right, you're trying you know to keep I mean? them as lean as possible. Yep. Right, exactly. Yeah. Yep. All right. Uh, let's move on to Imperial Special Forces, the unit, not the category. <laughs> And they really, really screwed the pooch on this name, man. Um, I, 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 I think it is literally like the it is like the canon name for what it they is. are. It so is it's kind of unavoidable. Yeah. But when they released it, I was like, wait, you could put them on anything because there's some confusion. It's yes. you know. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about the unit called Imperial Special Forces. Uh. What context are you taking them in and what are you running them with? I just, I think we a little, I think we differ a little bit here. I think, you know, we talked a little bit precast. I, I think you're taking them with Iden only uh, for the most part. I do think there might be an edge case to take one elsewhere, but like the real value you get out of ISF is the tax strike turn, right? And follow up by coordinated fire probably. And you just kind of try and overwhelm your opponent with, fixed uh, fixed dice is essentially what i'm going to call it because it's what it is right because of marksman like you're fixing your dice essentially for two rounds um i think they're an excellent unit um and if they were in any other army i th i think that like, you could probably consider them in every single list i i think in empire it's it's important to note that like in, in going back to snipers but the long range pierce is really really important um it, it, you know but with Aiden. You know, we had the three, three, three. It didn't really pan out, which I kind of didn't think it would. I, I and and maybe that's a TTS thing. Maybe on a real board, maybe three, three, three has a little bit of a better chance because of like how tables are. You know, very different, right? And if the the more open a board is, like the three, three, three list kind of strives a little bit better because it can just hit your opponent in the open with and not even have to fix its dice, right? Like, there's a lot of different things, right? Um. I, I still think that like the Iden build to take would be like one generic ISF unit with two, with two strike teams. Per, that's a personal thing. Um, you know, you bring in the T21, you bring an offensive push. Uh, I probably would bring recon Intel for the extra movement possibilities. Uh, and that's where I land. Um, other than that, I don't know if I would take them without Iden, but that's me personally. Uh, I mean, they're clearly at their best, I think with Iden. I think I, I think we can probably all agree on that. Um, it's hard to beat tax strike as far as how do, how you're using them, but I do think that like you know, I, I definitely think that there is more play to a solitary special forces squad than there is to like a singleton Bistan Pathfinder squad. Um, but, you know, if you're just going to take a unit that can infiltrate. <laughs> You know, I, are are either of those things super great? Probably not. Um, uh, and but I, and I also think that when you're comparing them to the whole snipers thing, I actually think this the issue is snipers. I don't think is. I I don't really think that they're there to bring the Pierce. Like it's nice that they bring the Pierce. It's really the fact that it's everything in Empire is so expensive yeah um, it, it, no, it's, true. it's true it's it's really hard to like build a list with a decent character and like get to 10 activations without a bunch of strike teams um is yeah yeah i agree i mean i'm in i'm in with zach here i think it's iden tax strike build only uh, personally um, so if you're doing that, you're taking them definitely with the T21. Yes. Is there yeah. any context in which you take ISF naked? Uh, Maybe for like an infiltrate, like, you know, objective runner. Um, but like, that's, well, I don't even know what that, that base would be. Um, I think it's like 60 something. I think it's, I mean, I don't love it, but if you're in for something like that, I think it's probably fine. 60, it's 68 points essentially. So doesn't yeah. seem terrible for like an, not, objective, an objective unit. It's not terrible. It's just the, the best advice I can give you is infiltrate is a very tricky keyword to get right. 
Um, it takes a lot of practice. And yeah. if you, if you, if you do it wrong, you will get it boned. You just lose basically. If you yeah. And like, yeah. you just, you can, you could essentially free give your opponent 68 points, which you definitely don't want to do. Um, yeah. So if you are going to do that, practice it, practice it, practice it. I mean, I think that that applies to just special. This unit in general is that like, if you don't know how to play infiltrate, you should leave this unit at home. Oh yeah, they definitely um, need, need yeah. to play that keyword. I agree. Like, because if you're if you're not abusing that keyword, there's no reason to take this unit. Yep. Um, it's an amazing keyword, but it's also a very swingy keyword that if you mess it up you will be hosed <laughs> yeah i mean it's only swingy if you make a mistake right well that's what i mean yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah um so but but it's it, they're tough to play for sure and i think you know to your point about the 333 list zach i think that the reason we don't see it is because uh, that's hard to do and not make a mistake and the rest of the list is yeah. sort of really fragile oh you know? i hate the list you know that so like, i know you do you, you know hate like, a lot of things though so i, I well <laughs> no i hate i hate mortars and i hate mk2 so if any list revolves around both those two i just innately hate them because i just think they're fragile units that are trying to back but not backbone but they're backboning the backbone, if that makes sense. Like the the reason the list works is because you're taking those cheap activations to to like feed those other units to in the list, right? And I just don't think it actually I just don't think that can work. Because the moment you go down a mortar or two, like you're down to eight activations. You can't really play games with ISF and they're going to lose a gunfight against a lot of other units because after the tax strike turn, they can't peekaboo, right? Like they can't you know, do a lot of things after that. They're, they're kind of dug in and they have to survive, right? It, yeah, it's, I mean, the ISF list is very much like an alpha strike. You have to spike the ball on whatever turn you play that card kind of list. And if you swing and a miss, you know, if you don't hit a home run on that turn, um, the rest of the game could potentially be pretty rough for you. So, which doesn't mean that list can't work. I have seen the isf tactical strike list just like table somebody in one turn basically um but you know if if you if you swing and a miss it's definitely not great for the rest of the game because of how much it relies on that alpha strike yeah one trick ponies in competitive legion is, is tough like it's it's not like like there are alpha strike lists where the alpha strike is kind of like incidental yeah, like, clearly like, it's, a, it's a, yeah, right. That's the one. <laughs> um, we're like the it, you know you're still gonna be able to like collapse somebody on a turn where you don't play whatever that card is. Um, the ISF tax strike list is not necessarily one of them. Coordinated fire in that list is pretty strong too. But like you know you play your tax strike, then you play your coordinated fire, and after that, like if your opponent's not dead, you might be in trouble. The gas in the tank runs out quickly. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right. Uh, lastly, we have Death Troopers. <laughs> oh no, um, we have Inferno Squad. Don't forget Inferno. Okay, I'm squad. sorry. You're right. We got Inferno Squad. All right. Is there any situation in which you're running Inferno Squad? If you want to have fun. Yeah. Competitively speak. It. Competitively speaking, no. They need to be like 20 points cheaper. Any of yeah. them? I'm not sure. I I I went to bat for Dell and and like Husk uh, or Hask like. When they when they were like mentioned, I was like, you know what? Maybe they'll find a place, and maybe you'll put them somewhere. And uh, I can I can confirm that is wrong. <laughs> and um, I wish they could work. I do. Uh, I think they're thematically awesome. I think Inferno Squad is like thematically awesome. Like I think what they did with it is really cool. Um, but in terms of competitiveness and and the point sink, it's just not worth it. It just isn't. And I just don't think you're putting Dell or I don't think you're putting Dell or Hask anywhere else because like I've seen like Hask in like a in like a you know a short trooper unit, but like and for the coordinate which I I kind of get, but like you're not taking a T21B on your short trooper, so like what gives, man? You know, like so I wish there was a place for them. I think that I think the real issue is that you look at Dell and you look at Hask. And then you look at fives and you look at echo and I could just see if I was an empire player only, man, this massage ball would probably not be in my hand. 
I mean, um, on paper, they don't look that different. No, they don't. And they don't. I agree. On paper, they don't look different. In, Zach, in, not everyone can be fives. All right. I understand <sighs> that. And, and, then, and that's a fives problem. That's not a Dell and a, and a, and a Hask problem. I uh, get that. I think but I, I would like do, it if more right? things were closer to fives. Yeah, I don't, I don't disagree. Right. But I'm just saying that's what happens when you have units come out around the same time. You just always automatically go to those things. And I don't blame them for doing so. Right. Like, like Imperial players. I don't blame them at all for feeling that way. I think you know, Dell and Gideon could be both 10 points cheaper and it would still be a question on if you took them. <laughs> yeah. I don't I, disagree with like, you. Like in Inferno or not in Inferno. I'm like, with I you. I still think that it's like, it's a, it's a question on whether you would even add them to units <laughs> still. Um, Which is, uh, that's, that's a tough pill to swallow. <laughs> like, that's not 10 points each would be a lot, like, and it's still questionable. That's tough. Not everything can be a hit. The good news is that points cost in this game can and have changed. Yeah, so, no, yep. I'm with, I, I get it. Uh, all right, Dust Troopers. Oh, man. Has there ever been a unit that has gone from being more good to more bad no. in this game? Um, Did they just instantly become untakeable as soon as Ark's released? Because I feel like that's basically what happened. Um. I think that it's a part of it. I think Lando almost makes them incomplete. Like, uh, they, uh, well, hold up, hold up. Even more I so. I feel like people were like poo pooing on Death Troopers like way before we even knew ARCs existed. But maybe that's, I don't know. Like, like I feel like Death Troopers, I don't know. I mean, maybe Death, Troopers, me, but... Death Troopers were in the LVO final. Which was yes. the last major tournament that we had? No, they yeah, were. That was yes, they were. Yeah, they were, in the bo- they were in that Bosk yeah. list. I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Kyle Crosser ran him against Luke. Nine act Bosk. Uh, Are yep. you sure there were DTs? Hunter in there? Shores yep. and Hunter. One hundred percent. I thought that was a short trooper list. It was. It had it Shores and Death Troopers. I thought he played Veers. He did. He did. Um, we're gonna have to check the check the check. I will. Out. I will bet you any amount that there. I'm not betting anything because I don't. I don't. I'm not gonna bank on. He my had like memory. six copies of Hunter in that list, and yeah, some of them were on Death mm-hmm, Troopers because mm-hmm. that was the Tauntaun, the Tauntaun yeah. meta. I do not he recall had, Death Troopers being which in that honestly, list. And, and the reason call, the cause... reason the reason I am suspect of this is because on, I, I, I sat there for three hours. Yeah, I know. Watching that match. <laughs> While because Kyle i was i was clocking it i was the one with the stopwatch yeah i know <laughs> while kyle Which, looks it up yeah I, I don't i don't i think that they had some ire like you were saying mike but Maybe not, it, did it, have a DT, it yeah. got way worse when arcs came out for dts like like the notion of dts i, yeah. I think some other stuff came out that kind of makes it even like cassian i think is really bad for dts lando's really bad for dts like all right, here well, we go. Ready? Yeah, I, I mean, if you found it and it's there, I believe I did. Okay, yep. great. <laughs> <laughs> Veers, Bosk, three shores, three mortars, death troopers. Okay, I, I believe you. I yeah. now that I'm thinking about it more, it's coming back to me a little bit. Anyway, my they my came point up is... the flank and I think got blown away pretty quickly. Uh, uh, anyway, regardless. They have been good relatively recently. <laughs> I mean, that uh, was over a year ago. Well, clearly, but recently <laughs> in the meta. Yeah. Um, Arcs, Arcs, I know the Cassian pandemic kind of warps the perception of time. It does. Everything. It totally does. Um, but I, I do think that, like, I mean, they've always been vulnerable to snipers. That's always been a thing with them, and they've still yeah. been good enough. Yeah. But now that super snipers are a thing... <laughs> um, I mean, I think Cassian probably didn't help either. Yeah, no, Cassian. Oh, that kind of no, happened. That that I think is what that's what I'm thinking that really drove the nail. And I think was. But Cassian that kind of happened around Iden. the same time. It, Cassian well, and Iden released with very close in proximity to arc snipers. Sure, sure. I think those so, those two characters are a much bigger problem for Death Troopers and arcs are. Um, so personally. actually, they they released very far apart. But we live in this world where we've been playing with arcs because yeah, of yeah, DTS yeah. way yeah, before. Because yeah. I think Cassian and Iden were like April, and arcs didn't come out all the no. way until August. Yes, yes, absolutely. All right, I know because I remember painting Cassian in K two, like I still have in the spring t- in the springtime. I know I paint them in the springtime. Anyway, sure. uh, long story. I don't know short. why I remember that, but I do. 
Death Troopers currently, is there any situation you're taking them in a competitive Legion game? If they got impervious. Uh, are you if in there, the, is there any situation with their current unit card where you're taking Death Troopers? I don't think so. I I I I, again, I don't like saying that about units. That's my issue. Like I really, it's not really something I want to say, right? Especially if if you're but, playing Krennic, you're taking a squad of Death Troopers, yeah, right? Sure. Like that's yes, I'm with you. Okay. Um, I also think, like just about everything else on this list, I think they're just really good with attack strike. But everything on this list is good with tax strike is the yes. thing, you know. Um, and there's definitely a best thing you can be doing with it. Um, like Iden literally makes every unit on this list better, whether it's a sniper strike team, a full scout team, IRG, whatever. Um, yeah, you know, Iden is the special forces commander. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Um, Attack strike death troopers are scary. They really are. So actually, now that you mention it, last season in Invader, season five, I faced a attack strike death trooper list in eliminations. Yeah, like it's reasonable to get to range two is the thing. Oh, I remember that. Right? Game. Oh, yeah. Like, you know, well, it's, and even it's... if you get to range four, you're talking about two aims with that range fool. Like you're gonna bank six hits basically. Six but, or seven hits. Yeah, I mean they do that. They do that kind of normally anyway. Yeah. yeah. Those, uh... the, the the difference is that like um, if you've got the close range config and a billion dice with two aim tokens, you're putting yep. like 10 through cover because um, you've got blast. Yep. And, uh, and and they all are shooting like twice two white dice or whatever in addition. So I and mean, they have precise too. Right. So they're rerolling four, four, <laughs> yeah. four dice per aim token, right? So it's yep. like those white dice aren't really white at that point. <laughs> um, exactly. Yeah. You know, so. Uh, I yeah, I mean, I think as a one of in like a tax strike list, sure, whatever. Um, yeah, I mean, at that point, if you're taking ta- if you're doing an attack strike list, is the DLT an offensive push then, right? I mean, oh, you mean what do you run with? Yeah, them? yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's DLT and either hunter or offensive push. Yeah, I prefer uh, O push just because. Yeah, it works on uh, you're everything. Re- you're recovering with them a lot, yeah. anyways, yeah. because of the gun. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah. So you're, you're taking off. config DLT 19D and Opush, basically. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I will say, <laughs> I have really tried hard to make DTF work. DTF uh, 16. It's yes. it's a good concept on paper, for what it's worth. I mean the the only list where I think it's like even close to something you should be trying is is with Commander Vader. I was gonna say uh, with Vader, yeah. Just but because... like that's a point sink, right? You know. Well, and once Vader dies, like everything falls apart. Yeah. Well, <laughs> um, well, yeah, that's because the points. It's because yeah. of the point sink and everything else. Yeah. Um, but it's interesting, at least you know. So, um, but yeah, yeah, don't don't take DTF. It's real bad. It's just it's her function is super duplicative with Krennic and yeah. if you're running Death Troopers you're probably running Krennic so yeah yeah um and the gun her gun is just so bad like for a heavy weapon she has the same problem that Pow does I haven't, I haven't yeah just, like I really lo- you yeah, can you literally like, just like a add a option. die to their weapons and they'd be fine um oh yeah it's black and a white dice yeah I, I mean it, it's was. like a personnel upgrade and a heavy weapon slot basically she she's also is she ranged three yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I mean, in fairness, like the standard death troopers range three. I also strongly think their config should just be zero. Uh, I agree. No, config should be zero, and they should have impervious. Is how I would fix it. Because, like, what? What? It, I think the so the biggest issue with the death trooper, I don't think, is their kit. I don't think is their stats. I don't think it's their lack of impervious. It's the fact that before any like God, it's a lot of points. fun it's a lot of upgrades. Points like offensive push hunter comlink recon intel whatever like literally just the heavy in the config which is a requirement for taking this unit yeah just to be clear um is 118 points i, say, I think it's 118 yeah, yeah. like it's a lot like, oh, just, like like i think a full arc unit is cheaper than that they are they are <laughs> <laughs> and I or think right around like, the same or right around the same maybe subst- 
No, it's ten points. It's nine points cheaper. Oh boy! And they have tactical. They have tactical <laughs> yeah. and impervious and. Have access to take that clankers so scout they get the two. range for a shot too, and they have scout two, and they can share tokens and Pierce. and 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 well, and and lethal. Um, rather, but... so yeah, yeah, they're just too expensive. It's it's <laughs> well, and they have sharpshooter and they have lethal. All right, we've established yeah. that death troopers are too expensive. Yeah, um, <laughs> great, good talk. <laughs> and you can you can also take ISF for cheaper, right? Or right around the same too. Yeah, and, like if you're gonna do a tax strike build, you just take ISF for twenty points less, basically. Yeah, I don't think it's twenty, is it? It is. It's yeah. Uh, it's actually 20. <laughs> it's twenty one. Oh my god. <laughs> oh boy. I mean, that's that's without like offensive push on the ta- on on the ISF. All right, so seventeen. But, or, but I mean, yeah, that, yeah. that's a lot of points in that kind of list. It uh, it's a lot of points in any imperial list. You it's know, part of the problem. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I think we've uh, hit this topic successfully. <laughs> um, <laughs> you're you're welcome, Empire players. I know you've been asking me to share your pain, and I've been letting you down. So, <laughs> I, I openly uh, solicited to bring an Empire list to Atlantic City, and nobody took me up on it. So, um, I don't believe you. I did. It was on the Discord. Nobody's, <laughs> nobody said anything. But I think nobody believes gonna... your coin flips, Kyle. <laughs> Yeah, I did my coin flip in public in whatever season that was. I'm probably just going to restart playing Empire again because it's the only thing I've got painted. Yeah. <sighs> I'm going to bring droids to Atlantic City just because uh, like, I need a list that I'm comfortable with and that I'm used to because the physical aspect is going to be a whole other thing that my brain is going to be working on and I just want to be able to autopilot the list. So yeah, I think that's fair. I'm probably going to just literally like photocopy my invader list. Um just so I don't even have to think about anything else except like, oh shit, I have to pull out a real range ruler here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have enough phase twos to photocopy my invader list. Um, yeah. But um, all right. Well, any final thoughts, gentlemen? Yeah, I uh, I forgot to say it in the earlier part. I want to formally apologize to my my buddy Mike Jem that I played yesterday the first game that Obi Wan Sorisu Mastery seven uh, wounds back to him. Oh uh, yeah, uh, three three uh, no two to Sabine. You don't have to apologize for that. That's like one of the things in Legion that you just like you see it <laughs> and you like you're like yep and you move on and it hurts you in i felt pretty bad actually. ways and you just I, you have to move on she th- sabine had dark saber i i ran up and i whacked her and she blanked all three dice so she was immune pierce but took three wounds Ugh. okay then she whacked me back and took three wounds back uh on sorisu uh and and immediately died <laughs> uh so it was it was a, i i feel i wanted to apologize it was a, it was a pretty feels bad <laughs> No, that's awesome. feels bad. so here's a real <laughs> real bit of tactics insight for me i'm like legitimately afraid to hit obi-wan with any force user or saber wielder in melee if he has a dodge token yeah it's scary because like even if you roll one surge it's like in a in a duel between two d- things that are pierce immune that's yeah. like that's a big deal. <laughs> I mean, oh. good thing for you, Kyle. You typically play Dooku and Maul, who can kind of shut that down a little bit. Dooku can't shut it down. You can still pierce me. Yeah, but I can't like specifically pierce the surge. Like Dooku no. can still wound himself on Sorosu. Yeah, but you're at least guaranteeing a wound for a wound. Maul, right? Maul is pretty good against it. And Maul is yeah. yes, Maul is right. really good. Yeah. Specifically on the duel of the fates turn, obviously. Yes. Yes. Um. Anyway. We are way <laughs> off topic here. Um, <laughs> any final thoughts not related to any of that? Um, you know, uh, watch the Invader final, um, and then hopefully we can have a fun Yavin-based team league, and hopefully an in Invader Season 7, Empire is good again. Yep. Make uh, Empire great again. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm actually really looking forward to team league. Uh, we are doing a fifth trooper team. So we're gonna have to get our training montages together, <laughs> um, you know, play some Eye of the Tiger. Yeah, Captain America would say that. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would just like everyone to know that Team Fifth Truth is being rebranded as the Avengers, and Captain America will not be leading us this <laughs> this season. It will be Iron Man. Um, and so I guess we have to come up with names for the rest of you. But I already dug into <laughs> Spider Man, so Hold okay. On. There you go. I'll, I'll play there my part. Um, Who would Jay right. be? Um, Nick Fury. I could see that. Yeah, definitely. Uh, there you um, go. And Bushman's probably Ant Man. <laughs> Ant Man. Ironically, know. ironically, Bushman would be someone that's not on the Avengers, which would be Beast from X Men because he, his love of Wookies. Um, I don't know who John would be. That's a good question. I think Ant Man. He might, he might be the Winter Soldier. I could see Bucky. Maybe. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, you're right, yeah. Bucky. Yeah, yeah. It seems like John type. Yeah, yeah. That speaks his when he speaks his mind. He's very, uh, you know, into it. Yep. Yeah. So, All right. I guess yeah. it'd be Bucky. That's our that's our team league. We're just the Avengers. <laughs> um, yep. And uh, yeah, it'll be fun. Um, I I like the the format has has changed pretty substantially. I'm sure we'll get into it. Um, yep. Undoubtedly. In an episode here pretty soon, but I think it's it's very interesting this season. So. It is in a good way. In a good way. Definitely. All right. Well, we are the notorious scoundrels. I'm Kyle. I'm Mike. I'm your friendly friendly neighborhood Spider Man. (laughs) Stay fresh, cheese bags.